Well, you know what they say. Big things come in little sizes. Oh yeah, look at me. I'm at man. Ooh, I'm so tiny. Whoa, yeah, high five. So yeah, how do I grow back now? Hello everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review the Marvel film Ant-Man. So Ant-Man stars Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, Evangeline Lilly, Michael Pena, and Corey Stoll, along with Bobby Cannavale and Judy Greer, and it is directed by Peyton Reed, the same director of Bring It On. So Ant-Man is about this burglar named Scott Lang. He just got out of prison. He's hoping to reconnect with his little daughter, but because of his bad situations, he's not able to go reconnect with his little daughter. So Scott wants to redeem himself, and by redeeming himself, to show the kind of hero that his daughter thinks that he is, he decides to help his mentor, Dr. Hank Pym, played by Michael Douglas, to pull off this heist. And in order to pull off this heist, he has to wear this suit, which has the ability to make him shrink, but also grow in strength. So honestly, going into Ant-Man, I know there was a lot of worries and skepticisms going into this movie because of Edgar Wright previously being the director for this film and then leaving this project. So people, of course, weren't sure how this film was going to turn out. But to be honest, I was really looking forward to Ant-Man. I really love the concept of Paul Rudd shrinking. It is basically Marvel's Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. So now that I've seen Ant-Man, I can honestly say Marvel, you have done it again. Ant-Man handles the shrinking concept so well with this hero. And what makes this movie unique from the other Marvel movies and maybe even superhero movies in general is that we actually have a legacy hero. Hank Pym was the original Ant-Man. You've got Scott Lang taking in Hank Pym's place, becoming the next generation of Ant-Man. And right from there, I thought that was really smart of the movie to do. And Paul Rudd, my goodness, was he just the perfect casting for Ant-Man. He really captures this character so well. He embodies what this character is all about. You have Paul Rudd still being funny, but you know the character can get serious when he needs to be. The action scenes, holy crap. The action scenes, when it's there, it is so awesome to look at. It's like this huge extravaganza, but in such a small scale. When he's shrinking, when he's growing in the Ant-Man suit, it looks like it just came to life so well. Visually, it looks so impressive, especially in the opening scene where you see Michael Douglas young. Oh my God. It Visually, this movie is impressive. Action sequences are well filmed, well choreographed, and this being like the first time Peyton Reed gets to handle action, man, does he do such a great job not only directing that man, but directing the action scenes. They were handled with such care and passion, and I was just having a pure blast when the action scenes are happening. Besides Paul Rudd being an excellent Ant-Man, you also have Michael Douglas as Hank Pym, who also does a great job in the movie. You have Evangeline Lilly, who plays Hank Pym's daughter, who I thought also did a great job in the movie. And then you have Bobby Cannavale, who does a really good job for what he has. And then you have Judy Greer, who is barely in the movie, but she does a pretty decent job in the movie too. But, oh my goodness, this movie, it's funny, but it is hysterical when you get to Michael Pena's character. Michael Pena, man, he is one of the most underrated actors working in Hollywood. And I'm glad to see him be in this Marvel movie as this comedic guy. He nails those scenes. And his crew does a very nice job too, but of course, the standing man in terms of comedy is by far Pena. So Pena... Big thumbs up to you, good sir. The movie also does have a really nice, well-written storyline to keep it fresh because not only is Ant-Man just a really good superhero movie, but I think it's also a pretty good heist movie. And it also has probably more heart 
than you would see in a Marvel movie. And that's just, and that's not to say the others don't have heart because they do, but I think Ant Man, I think this is the Marvel movie that has the most heart. I think this is also the Marvel movie where they keep it the most kid friendly, I guess you could say as well, which I think is a good thing because they handle that very well. And I also love the parallel that Scott Lang and Hank Pym deal because, you know, Scott Lang is trying to connect with his little daughter who is just really adorable. The actress that played the little girl did a really great job. And you also have Hank Pym who is dealing with his stuff with his daughter. So it's nice that Hank Pym and Scott Lang, as far as them being fathers, they have something in common. And as far as the humor goes, the funniest part by far, other than Michael Pena's moments, of course, is by far the finale. The finale was so awesome. There's a lot of great comedic moments that go into the finale. Now, the only flaws I do have to say with Ant-Man is that for the first half of the movie, just by, I would say maybe 10 minutes, the movie does drag for me. And that's literally right after Paul Rudd puts on the Ant-Man suit for the first time in the movie, after that awesome scene, I did feel like the movie started to drag, but then it picked itself back up after like 10 minutes in the first half of the movie. Also, while there are a couple of good dramatic scenes in the movie, I do feel like most of them felt very forced. They didn't feel natural. How it shifted from comedy to drama felt a little out of place to me. And just like with most Marvel Cinematic Universe villains, Corey Stoll as a villain. Oh. He was not that good, to be honest. To Corey Stoll's credit, his acting was not awful. He does try his best with the material he's given, but he's overall just okay as this villain, and that's just because his character is like too one-dimensional. And he has a couple of good scenes, but really the villain is just utterly forgettable. The yellow jacket suit was cool, but what motivated him to get inside that suit, it did feel pretty rushed in my opinion, and it just didn't work as well as I would have liked it to. But overall, guys, ah, man, I had such a fun time with this movie. It is a blast to watch. It's a nice way to end phase two. So I'm going to give Ant-Man a very solid three out of four stars. So you guys, comment down below and let me know what did you think of Ant-Man? What is also your favorite Marvel film in phase two? And which Marvel film do you think is funnier? Ant-Man or Guardians of the Galaxy? And also, you guys, I did get to be on Mark Krojic's podcast, The Spoiler Room, to spoil and discuss Ant-Man. I'll leave a link in the description below. And I also got to collab with Seb Carrasco on the Universe of the Blue Tubers channel to give our non-spoiler thoughts on Ant-Man. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below as well. Well, thank you so much for watching everyone. This is 22 Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.